Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Celeste, and I'm a librarian here at the Harris County Public Library. Today, while most of Houston is out celebrating Cinco de Mayo, we're here celebrating Japanese Children's Day with the Japanese American Society of Houston. Also called JASH, the Japanese American Society is a wonderful community-based Houston organization that offers programs in language, education, arts, culture, and even business. And on this super festive day, I'm joined by Dylan, who has a fun presentation, and Ms. Katayama, who has a craft prepared for us. Hi, Dylan and Katayama. How are y'all doing today? Doing I'm so well. excited to learn about Japanese Children's Day. So I saw the list of craft materials, and I'm going to do it while Ms. Katayama shows us, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to have Mr. Dylan right here now giving us the presentation. Are you ready? Hmm. All right, let's take it away. All right. Let me share my screen here really quick. My apologies. It's not, it's not letting me. My apologies. <laughs> it, was, it was working before, but it's not now. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I'm here today for um, representing the Japan America Society of Houston. Uh, my name is Dylan Coffey and let's begin. So we're going to learn about Children's Day or in Japanese, uh, Kodomo no Hi. So as um, we said before, in America on May 5th, people generally celebrate Cinco de Mayo which has roots in Mexican history. But in Japan, they celebrate a very different holiday. They celebrate Children's Day, or Kodomo no Hi. So this is a holiday that celebrates the growth, the um, health, and the happiness of children in Japan. Um, it's been a national holiday since 1948, and it is a, very, it is a favorite holiday of children in Japan. Um, this is a very long, has a very long history, this um, holiday. It used to be called Tango no Seku, and this was one of the traditional five seasonal festivals in, in the year, in the calendar year. Um, it was originally a festival for boys. Um, it, was, it has its roots in samurai tradition and warrior culture um, because all families wanted their sons to become strong and big adults to be able to, you know, protect their home. Um, and girls act also have a similar holiday. Um, it's called Girls' Day, or in the past, Momo no Seku. And this holiday is on March 3rd. So how do people celebrate Kodomo no Hi in Japan? Um, the biggest thing that you'll notice, and the symbol of um, Children's Day, or Kodomo no Hi in Japan, is the Koi no Bori flags, or the carp streamers in English. Um, as you can see, let me go back um, to the first picture here. Um, the material that these um, carp streamers are made out of is similar to a kite. It's, just, it's like a plastic type of material. And there are many different colors and shapes and sizes of these designs. Um, they symbolize strength and the ability to overcome obstacles and have success. Because in Japan, the carp is um, something that re represents strength because it can jump up the waterfalls and up the streams, so it's considered very strong um, traditionally in Japan. This is the full size length of the traditional Koinobori um, flag. So at the very top, you can see here the little orange globe. Um, this is called the Yaguruma, and it is a charm to protect against evil. Um, in real life, it kind of looks like a wind chime, and it can rotate many different ways, so it can protect in all areas and protect your household. The next part is the streamer. Um, this is called the Fuki Nagashi. It is a five color streamer that protects from harm. So it has a traditional um, religion, religious connotation. Um, and also, you can't see it in this image, but usually in the very front left side there, it will um, have the image of the family symbol or the family crest, which is very important 
and connects with the samurai culture. Next, you'll see the, um, the carp, and these are the koinobori. Um, the first one um, is the longest, the biggest, and is always black. This represents the father. In Japanese, they say magoi. So the black and the biggest one is the father. Next is the red one. This one is a little smaller than the black one, but still bigger than the blue one. And this is called the higoi in Japanese, and this represents the mother of the family. Next, we have the blue one. Now this one can be blue, purple, orange, green, many different colors. But this one always is the smallest and it represents the, fan, the children. So there will be sometimes more than one because multiple um, children in the family. Okay, next, this is the Kabuto. This is also a very important symbol during Children's Day in Japan. Um, kabuto means helmet or samurai helmet in Japanese. And this symbolizes the strength of the samurai, the power, the bravery of um, samurai and what you hope for your child to become, for your son to become. So you see in the middle image, the children will sometimes wear those hats and feel strong and feel like they're very, you know, becoming a samurai. And then on the right is how they celebrate it maybe a little bit more today. People make paper hats that look like the samurai helmet, similar to how we make um, paper hats, you know, out of newspaper or even like paper airplanes. Next, um, this is a traditional story that you can hear in Japan during Children's Day. This is the legend of Kintaro, or Nature Boy in English. Um, this is a story about a child who was raised in the mountains and becomes friends with a lot of the local animals. He even rides a bear, as you can see. And when he becomes an adult, he becomes a monster fighter, a big warrior. And this is very connected to samurai culture because children can relate to this and want to become Kintaro when they're older. Um, if you want to learn more about this, actually, at the Harris County Public Library, they have some books about this. If you try to find some Japanese folk tales or storybooks, you can find this tale in those books. Next, this is a popular food that is eaten during Children's Day in Japan. This is the kashiwa mochi. Kashiwa in, in Japanese, it means oak leaves. Um, it is a rice cake, which is rice that is pounded into a sticky um, cake-like substance. And inside, you put a sweet bean paste and then wrap it in an oak leaf because the oak leaf symbolizes strength. You know, oak is a very, very big tree. And also, um, since oak leaves do not fall until the, the shoots come up out of the ground, they symbolize the respect and link to one's elders or ancestors. It's a very important culture in Japan to respect your elders and um, your past. And it is a very delicious treat. Next, maybe this is the most unique compared to American culture. This is the shobuyu or iris bath. If you look on the left, you can see the, the iris plant. This is called shoyu or shoyu, shobu in Japan and Japanese. Um, it is a medicinal herb that was believed traditionally to be kind of a lucky charm or a talisman um, with the power to drive away evil spirits. This is also connected to the koinobori, the idea of driving away evil spirits to protect the health and youth of children. Um, and the reason people thought this is when you put the leaves of this plant in the water, see how it kind of changes color and becomes green? And the smell is very strong, it kind of smells like eucalyptus or some of the oils that sometimes you put in the bathtub, it smells very strong. Um, another reason they use this is um, the word shobu in Japanese. It can mean the iris plant, but it can also mean victory in Japanese. So it connects with the idea of strong youth becoming adults. Okay, now let's go to the Q&A. Yes, oh my goodness, that was so exciting. What I liked the most was the Momonoseki Girls Day. So I'm gonna celebrate that every March 3rd now. Please do, please do. <laughs> and I just need to find some of those treats, which gets me to our first question. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, where can we get some of those Moki treats that you talked about in Houston? 
Um, so I know that there is a um, Japanese grocery store. It's on the west side of Houston, and it is called Seiwa Market. Um, mm -hmm. S E I W A. And there they sell a lot of traditional Japanese foods, snacks, and um, different items you can buy in Japan. And they're very good about um, sharing the different foods of the holidays throughout the year. And I believe they sell the Kashiwa mochi, but you can also buy mochi any time of year. Um, you can always find it in those supermarkets. There's also one in downtown Houston called um, Daido Market, D-A-I-D-O. Mm, I'm writing these down, D-A-I-D-O and mm -hmm. Sewa Market, cool. Mm -hmm. And someone else asked, and this is a question for me, if they're able to watch mm -hmm. this later. So yes, anybody listening right now, you can definitely watch this later. You can go to our Facebook page slash virtual programs, or you can click on the very top, there's like a little menu bar. Um, you'll see where it says events, and you'll also see a button that says video and also live. And so it'll be archived there for later. So don't worry. So you can, we can go ahead and go to the, um, the, the craft now. And I'm so excited to get that started. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Are you ready, Ms. Katayama? Okay. <laughs> okay, so for this um, present for this um, craft, you'll need some different materials. Um, you'll need the toilet paper tubes, the craft paper for the decoration, um, the black and white paper or googly eyes to make the eyes for the fish, string, a stick or chopsticks, glue, scissors, and tape. Okay, thank you. So let's first start by making the carp scales. So the little circles that will go onto the toilet paper tube. Okay, so first choose your favorite colors. You want maybe four or five colors stacked together like how Ms. Katayama is showing you. So put them on top of each other, okay? And then make sure they're pushed together. Um, and then fold the paper to a little bit longer than the tube, than the top of the tube. See how Ms. Katayama is putting it on top? So do it like that and then fold it. Make sure it's folded well. And then fold it back and then you will cut so cut along the line that you make, the folded line, so that you will have a strip of all of the colors together. OK? So now you have the strip. And you want to save the other paper. You don't need the other paper now. So next, you will take the toilet paper tube and put it on top and trace. You want to trace with the marker, trace around the toilet paper tube. Great. Then you want to take your scissors, right? Oh, my apologies. First, you want to fold. You want to fold that circle over backwards like that just like Ms. Katayama is doing. Fold it backwards and then again. So depending on the length of your paper, you should have two or three folds so it's stacked. Now, take your scissors and cut around the traced circle that you made. This way you will get many, many carp scales or the circles. Make sure to take your time so you do not cut yourself. Please be careful. So if you cut like that, then now you can see Miss Katayama has many, many carp scales of many different colors. Great. Okay. Now we need the toilet paper tube. And now we will grab our glue and our toilet and our um, circles 
And you will begin by gluing one of the ends of the toilet paper tube and then putting one of the tail, you want to put half of the circle sticking off the edge of the toilet paper tube, just like Miss Katayama is doing. This is going to be the tail of the fish. So after doing the one, you want to continue and slightly overlap just like that. And try to exchange the colors. Don't do the same color many times. You want to make it look beautiful. But you can do any design you like. If you only have one or two colors, that is OK. Make the fish how you want, to, how you want it to look. And then continue to glue the edge so that half of it is sticking off. Then it should take four or five circles to complete around the edges of the toilet paper tube. And these will look like the tail. That is the first step of the fish. Next, we will continue gluing up the toilet paper tube. And this time you will overlap the colors like Miss Katayama is doing. You will make the scales go slowly up the fish. Make sure there is enough color showing from the ones below. You don't want to cover it too much. And remember, you can change the colors to make, like, see how she has the red or the um, green and then yellow and orange. Or you can put them all in a row if you like. Make it how you want. And continue going along the edge. You always want to do a full circle around before you move up to the next area. And take your time. If you have the paper like Miss Katayama, it's very thin. So be careful to glue carefully and put it on carefully or it might rip. But any kind of paper is OK. If you have shiny paper or dark paper, construction paper, anything is OK. Keep going up the toilet paper tube. But be sure to leave maybe about half of an inch from the top for the last part. Keep going like that and changing the colors if that's what you want to do. The colors that Miss Katayama is using are colors that you see on the Koinobori flags in Japan. Orange and yellow, blue, green. These are very common colors in Japan. And you see that Miss Katayama left the last portion at the top. OK. So this part, we will need to glue the top like she is, but also on the scale, you want to leave a little bit on the top. And for that, you all you want to glue the top part of the circle that she has. See the lip? And you want to glue there. And then you will take it and fold it inside of the paper tube. You want to make sure all parts of the construction paper cardboard is covered from the toilet paper tube. So make sure to glue on the top of the circle and fold it inside of the toilet paper tube and continue around the top. If you leave too much space from the top, then you will have to use another set of circles to go over the lip. So make sure there's enough space that it can loop over. Just like that. And everyone goes at different speeds, so don't rush. Make sure it looks beautiful for you. I'm excited to see everyone's different designs. <laughs> Very nice. I like her different colors. They're really pretty. Almost finished. I think we have one more circle. Mm -hmm. 
last color will be yellow, maybe? <laughs> Nope, <laughs> orange. <laughs> and then remember to glue the top and stick it on the inside, fold it over. And now we can see that all of the outside of the toilet paper tube is covered. And on the bottom, you have the fins or the tail for the fish and the top is folded over. Okay, so now the next part, what is the fish missing? It's missing its eyes, it can't see. So let's make the eyes for the fish. So you have two choices. One, you can have the googly eyes that you can buy at a craft store like Miss Katayama has. And those you just simply take off the back paper and stick onto the fish on, two, on the sides of its head. You want to stick it about halfway on each side there's one eye and then the other eye we will show the other method so for the other method if you don't have googly eyes if you have white paper and black paper then you can still make the eyes okay so now we need to draw a tiny circle and the size of the eye you want it to be a little small maybe the size of a drop of water about like that yeah that's good Yeah. And then on the, so that will be on the white sheet. On the black sheet, you want to do a smaller circle, one that will fit inside of the white circle. That will be the iris of the eye, the inside of the eye there. Then you want to fold, similar to the first fold we did for the carp scales, fold it over so that you can cut and have two eyes. So now Miss Katayama will cut around the circle she drew. And if you don't have black or white paper, Try to use a color that is different than the scales on your fish. As long as you can tell that the eyes are there, it's okay. Okay, so now she has the two white parts of the eye. Now she will fold the black piece of paper and cut so that there are two black parts of the eye. You can also just put one color of paper for the eye and then draw. If you have a marker, you can draw the black part. That's okay. As long as it looks like an eye to you, it's okay. Great. Now you want to take your glue stick and you want to glue on the black or the white side of the eye and put the black or put, yeah, put that onto the fish first and then glue the black part of the eye onto the white eye. Just like that. And now the fish can see. So now you can see on the one side is the googly eye and the other side is the paper eye. It's very different, right? <laughs> but either way is okay. Whatever you like. Okay, now let's do the last part. Now, please take your string. You only need one piece of string and you need tape. You need scotch tape. If you don't have tape, if you have a stapler or something, as long as it can stick, it's okay. So take your piece of tape and tape the, yeah, the string on the sticky side of the tape. Then take the sticky side of the tape and put it inside on the side where the eyes are. You want it on the eyes and it's best to stick it against the eye on the inside on the one side and then on the other side of the string tape the same way as before there's a piece of tape stick this the tape and then stick that on the inside of the toilet paper tube just like that like miss katayama is showing so you should have one piece of string on each side of the toilet paper tube. And then you can hold it and it will sh you can make sure that it's it will hold the toilet paper tube. Great, and it won't come out. Don't pull too hard, it's only tape. Okay, very good. Then you want to take one more piece of tape. Yep, okay. 
You'll, you'll need one more piece of tape, but first grab your stick and put the, the string, the end of the string, put that against the stick and then take your tape and tie it around so that it stays onto the stick. This way it looks like the big Koinobori flag that we saw during the presentation. So see how it stays on? Any method that will have it stay on the stick is okay. This is just the easiest method. Okay, so it stays on very well. So, and later after this craft and after this event, you can go back and make many more. You can make as many fish as you have family members. And that is a different number for everybody and that is okay. So the next thing we will do is we will make the Fuki Nagashi. So this is the five colored streamer that we saw during the presentation. This is a much easier craft to make. And this will go also onto our stick. Okay, so first grab your other toilet paper tube and then grab your sheet of paper from before. So put the, yeah, you want to make sure you have five, five different colors if you can. If you don't have five different colors, it's okay. Just take all of the colors you have and stack them in a sheet just like before and put the toilet paper tube on it. Now you want to make sure to cut just a little, you want your strip of paper to be a little longer than the length of the toilet paper tube. See how it's a little longer? Then make, fold the paper to the same length as the toilet paper tube, the same width. So if she puts the toilet paper tube on top of the fold, see it's the same size. That's what you want, so just like that. Now you'll see the fold and then you will cut along the fold. And it doesn't have to be exact. As long as it's close, it's okay. This is roughly about five inches long and maybe one and a half inches wide if you have a ruler and want to be exact, but this is okay. Okay, so now we have the five strips of paper Next, we need to take the toilet paper tube and we will cut in half, just like that, to do it, yeah, right in half. And be careful not to cut yourself. This is a little thick. The, the cardboard is a little thick, so be careful. Okay, so now you have two cardboard tubes, but you only need one. Now. We will take like before and we will glue each strip of paper to the toilet paper tube. But you only need to glue on the toilet paper tube maybe half an inch, a small strip of glue, and then attach the strip of paper to the very top of the glue of the um, toilet paper tube. And you want to make sure that all of the cardboard of the toilet paper tube is covered. You don't want to see the brown. So you can see in, on Miss Katayama's that you do not see any of the brown. Then you want to continue around the entire length of the toilet paper tube. And you want to cover just a little bit of the last color, maybe about 20 or 30% of the last piece. This way, each piece will have a, the same amount that you can see it on the streamer and you will continue around. Make sure to glue the just the top portion. You don't need to glue all of the tube. Very good. And you'll continue. Make sure you don't do it right next to the last color. You want to overlap just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. And this is why, because if you don't overlap, there will not be enough space for all five colors. So you want to overlap. As long as you can see the colors, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Very good. And then the last color we will attach there. Perfect, just along the edge. And then, as we can see on Miss Katayama's 
craft, all the sides are color covered. You cannot see the toilet paper tube, right? So yours will look like that, five different colors, okay? Next is the same process as we did for the fish. Now you will take your other piece of string and you will tape one end of the string and put that piece of taped string inside of the toilet paper tube on one side. Okay, and then on the other end of the string, take a piece of tape and tape it to the opposite side on the inside of the toilet, tip, toilet paper tube. So you can see on Miss Katayama's that it's on each side, the left and the right side, both have the piece of string taped to the side. So you can check by holding it you can hold the end of the string and you should be able to hold it without it breaking and it's easy to hold. And then we'll take our stick with our body flag on it and we will stick the uh, Fuki Nagashi on top. And it can be above or below, but you want, you prefer it to be on top. You want the top when you hold up the flag, the Fuki Nagashi the, that we just made, the streamer will be the top on the top. And then after that will be the, the fish, okay? So the streamer and then the fish. And remember, after the craft, you can go back and make more of these if you want. Many colors and shapes and sizes. If you want, you can cut your toilet paper tube to make a smaller fish to represent your family members. Perfect. Wow, that looks beautiful. Can we stand it up and see what it looks like? Like wave it around? Pick up the stick and wave the stick? Yeah, just like that, see? Make sure they stay on. And then you can decorate and you can make one for your whole house. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Okay, and that is the end of our craft. Wow, I had so much fun making that, Dylan. What does yours look <laughs> here's, like? Here's my little fish. I don't know if you oh, can see that's it. Oh, that's <laughs> I had, nice. I had some tricky paper, so I had to get some stronger glue. I didn't have tissue, so you can definitely see how versatile this is at home. Yeah. Use any kind of paper. Um, and I'm waiting for my Fuki Nagashi to dry because it's a little <laughs> wet. <laughs> and then I'll stick them on. How fun. Thank you so much, Dylan. And thank you, Miss um, uh, Miss Katayama, for showing us that beautiful craft. Ooh. Wow. I hope everyone is able to make one at home today. That would be really great. Yeah. So we do have some questions here in the chat. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people watching, and, and they're really interested in this program. So one of them was in reference to your um, presentation earlier, and it says, when did you say Boys' Day was again? So I'm thinking they heard me say about Girls' Day. When did you say Boys' Day was again, and what is it called? So in Japanese, Boys' Day is Kodomo no Hi. So Children's Day is Boys' Day. In the past, before 1948, this was Boys' Day, and it was celebrated as, you know, samurai culture. But in 1948, they realized there's no more samurai. Those, that kind of culture doesn't exist anymore. So they changed it to become a holiday to celebrate not only boys, but families too, to celebrate the happiness of children. But Girls' Day is still the same. So Boys' Day, or Kodomo no Hi, is May 5th. And then Girls Day is March 3rd. Is that correct, Ms. Katayama? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good. That's fun. And I think some of us forgot what type of fish did we make today? What was what was this little guy called? This is a carp, a carp fish. A carp fish. Cool. And where do you see a carp fish normally? Are they in rivers or are they? I believe waves? they're in rivers. Rivers and they can climb up the waterfalls, as I mentioned. Yeah, yeah that was so, exciting. And, Maybe a good example of a carp fish is a, it's a koi fish. If you've seen a koi fish in the koi pond. So if you know the Pokemon, if you know Magikarp, Magikarp is a koi fish. So that kind of image. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Magikarp the one that's kind of like <laughs> yeah, yeah. on his side, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> floundering around? <laughs> that's fun. Okay, so someone else wants to know, do grandparents get a streamer? Ms. Katayama, would you like to answer that? Sure. So, kind of decoration, you can show uh, your family. So, it, of course, you can set your grandparents' card. Oh, that's good. Uh, very good. Yeah, fun. So, the whole family gets one. And I like how you said you can represent each person in your family. So, you could probably even make a family one to hang mm -hmm. at home. That would be really great and fun. Okay, and this is our last question, I believe. Let me okay. go through and see if we have any more. It's what is your, and maybe this is for Dylan and for Ms. Katayama, what is your favorite Japanese day and how do you celebrate it? <laughs> do, you want to, do you want me to go first, Ms. Katayama, or okay. would you like to? So my favorite holiday or special day in Japan is New Year. Because we eat a lot of delicious New Year food, mm -hmm. and New Year is more family holiday, like Christmas in here. So my fa uh, New Year Day is my favorite holiday in Japan. Fun, and you celebrate by eating and being with family. That's fun. <laughs> what about you, Dylan? Um, so I I lived in Japan for almost four years, so I got to see all the holidays. And my favorite holiday is not one day, but it's a whole week. And it's actually happening right now in Japan. It's called Golden Week. So usually from the, the end of April through the beginning of May, they have a series of holidays, including Kodomo no Hi or Children's Day. And this becomes a week-long celebration in Japan where many people don't work and they travel. It's kind of like their version of a spring break. They get to celebrate many different holidays and travel across Japan or other countries. So it's a really fun time to see everybody in the country having fun and enjoying time with their families. Wow, that's great. A whole week of fun. <laughs> Very good. And we have a one more um, question that just came in. Mm -hmm. Where do you put the streamers? Where do people normally put these streamers when they're done with them? Ms. Katayama, would you like to share? So, actual pop streamer, we put outside of mm -hmm. it's garden outside front of the house usually, but currently we have in we don't have enough space. So, my family, we put cup decoration inside house. So. The small decoration is very useful, mm -hmm. and I don't have boy, but I have daughter. But we celebrate, we decorate, uh, we put decoration, point of body decoration in my house, and celebrate Children's Day every year. Nice. That's so fun. That's great. You can um, also see them driving around sometimes outside. They will have the big decorations near bridges or somewhere where the wind blows freely you can see them outside but in places big cities like tokyo and whatnot it's hard to have them outside so they do have them inside but you can see them everywhere fine so really anywhere you can put them anywhere so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's really great for decorating i'm sure a lot of children here in America, now that we're watching this, they're going to want to put them in the room because they're so colorful and so fun and so easy to make. Um, and I think that's all the questions we have right now. We're so thankful to you, Dylan and Ms. Katayama from JASH um, for joining us today, for teaching us about Japanese Children's Day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It was a great time. Yeah. Remember to check at the library if you want to learn more about the legend of Kintaro or other Japanese traditional stories. There are many books located at the library that you can find. And we hope to see you at some future events. So thank you very much. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> thank you for that, Dylan. Yes, please check out those books um, about those these super fun cultural stories that I've never heard of. And they're really fun. So I want to thank Dylan and 
Katayama again for the super fun craft and presentation. I hope all of you out there watching can recreate this at home sometime this week. And don't worry, again, if you forgot some of the details or some of the supplies, you can actually come right back here, right where we are now, to watch the archive again on Facebook or YouTube. If you like today's program, we actually have another fun event coming your way tomorrow. Tomorrow, which is Thursday, May 6th, starting at 7 p.m. It's a live Asian American dancing workshop and it's appropriate for all ages. So this is something super fun, a dance program that you can follow along with. So we hope to see you back here tomorrow at seven o'clock p.m. All right, everybody, well, it's time to go and hopefully we see you tomorrow. Happy Children's Day. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.